Shalom, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. Hey, while you're in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like, and subscribe. The word, right? Because what does the word do? It gives you comfort. Watch this. Give me, let's start with some basic. Romans 15 and 4. Because I seen you come over here, and when you walked up, you started tearing up. Right. Before you opened your mouth, I knew something you was hurt, right? What? Read what you got. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Let's read that again. Watch this. Listen real good. For whatsoever things were written aforetime, the things that was written aforetime is found in the Holy Bible. Right. It was written aforetime, meaning before you was here on the earth, before you was thought of, before you was formed in the womb. Read. Were written for our learning. It was written for a reason. It was written for us to learn from. Right? You can read the Bible and not make the same mistakes that our foremothers and the forefathers made, right? Read. That we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, and what? And comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So you stumbled over here because something in you told you that you're going to find comfort in what comes out of these, this Bible, right? Watch this. Give me Sirach 38 and 16, I believe it is. Bring it out, all. Two, because three. It's okay for you to let, let it out. You was crying. That's right. It's actually healthy for you. Right. Bring it out. Because if you bottle that up, you're going to grow a root of bitterness. Right. And start uh, portraying the same hatred. Right. Is that what I want? The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 38, verse 16. Bring it out. My son, let tears fall down over the dead. Let tears fall down over the dead. Now, the Bible was written in masculine form. It says, my son, it's about his daughters, too. Right. You mothers are losing a lot of y'all children out here in these streets. Bring it out. In the prison yeah. system. But what the Bible say? My son, let tears fall down over the dead. Let the tears fall down. That's your child you just lost. It was a man, it was about four, four people killed two weeks ago in back of the yards. That was somebody's children. That's that school shooting out there in Texas. Those were somebody's children. Right. You think they la laughing and joking about that? No, they crying. Right. You gotta let that out. Let's Preach. see why the Bible says so. And begin to lament, begin to mourn, begin to cry about it. Read. As if thou hast suffered great harm thyself. Yes, cry as if you felt the same pain that your son felt. Let it out. Read. And then cover his body according to the custom and neglect not his burial. That means go to the funeral if you can. Don't neglect it. Read that part again. And then cover his body. Cover his body, being buried him properly. According to the custom. According to our customs. We are civilized people. We bury our dead, okay? That's right. We are the so-called the so-called blacks and Spanish native Indians, all the Israelites. That's all right. All right. Come closer. I'm here to give you comfort in the scriptures. Read. And neglect not his burial. Uh -huh. Weep bitterly. It says what? Weep bitterly. Let it out. Weep bitterly. That's that that's that cry when you make it noise. You understand? That's sis. No, he's not right there. Oh, these are his ashes. Those are his ashes? Oh, these are his ashes. So you already had the funeral or anything? Okay, okay, read what you got. We bitterly and make great moan and use the lamentations as, it, as he is worthy. As he is worthy. Is he not worth crying over it? You had him, right? But like the officer, the previous officer said, the children you got left now is up to you to raise them up in the right way that they should go. So they would not depart. That's right. Right? And it starts with you by making an example. Read. And that they dare too, least thou be evil spoken of. Uh-huh. And then comfort thyself. Do what? And then comfort thyself. Comfort yourself. Read. For thy heaviness. For thy stress. How do you comfort yourself? We just we just read it earlier. Romans 15 and 4, remember? It says, comfort in the scriptures that you may have hope. So the comfort is going to come from the Bible. That's right. You got to open up the Bible and read it for yourself. Okay? And if, when you have questions, that's when you look on the back of that flyer, you call that number, we're going to direct you and guide you in the scriptures. All right? Was that it? Read on. Verse 18. For of heaviness cometh death, 
Because of heaviness, if you don't let it out, you build all that stress in you, it's gonna kill you. You understand? You too young to have a high blood pressure. Doubt, out. strokes, things of the nature. Bring it out. Stress bring forth that. Right. Read it again. For hev for of heaviness come of death. Because of stress, if you decide you wanna hold it in and you wanna you wanna pacify yourself with alcohol and drugs, that's gonna cause death. Read. For of heaviness come of death. And the heaviness of the heart breaketh strength. The heaviness of your mind, it causes you to break the strength, and it causes you to be weak. You don't want to do nothing. You ain't in the mood to do nothing. You just want to just lay there. But that's why I tell you to lament, cry, let it out. It's very important. Is that it? Read. Verse 19. In affliction also sorrow remaineth. In the life of the poor is the curse of the heart. Give me uh, wisdom of Solomon 16 to 12 again. I want to pour some out again. You sisters, you brothers, y'all are losing all y'all children right. in these streets. Right. Every day, one of y'all sons or daughters are being shot down, gunned down, or strung out on drugs, or carjacked, right. gang break, gang banged on. Right? Right. This is the scripture right here. Yeah, yeah, the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 16, verse 12. Bring it out. Where it was neither her nor modifying pastor uh -huh. that restored them to health. Let you know that it's not prescription meds. It's not over-the-counter meds. It's not molly. It's not weed that's going to restore you to health. It's not weed that's going to bring you comfort. It's not crack cocaine going to bring you comfort. That's right. It's not man-made no. drugs that's made in the lab going to bring you comfort. That's right. right. Read. But thy word, O oh Lord. But what's going to bring you comfort? Thy word, O oh Lord. That's the word right. of God is going to bring you comfort. Bring it up. That's the only way you'll get comfort. It's by the word of God. That's the scripture right. says faith coming by hearing. And by hearing the word of God. Right. Is that it? Which healeth all things. The word of God does what? Heals all things. You just lost right. a son. If you call that number on the back and come congregate with us, clean yourself up on a proper attire, ask your questions. We're going to guide you to the scriptures, and the word of God will heal all things. Wherever you heard it, right. read it again. For it was neither herb nor modified plaster. It was neither herb, your marijuana, nor modified plaster, your pills, your pop. Read. That restored them to health. That ain't gonna give you health. That's just a counterfeit cure. Make you feel good for a moment. Once it's gone, now you're feeling worse than ever. Right. Read. But thy word, O Lord, which healeth all things, for thou hast power of life and death. Uh -huh. Thou leadest to the gates of hell. Give me in the book of, uh, Second Thessalonians, I think it is. Two and seven. Two and seven. Second Thessalonians, two and seven. Because, what's your name again, sis? Jenny. You've been here for a minute. Listen. I see my brother and my sister walked up. They listen. I'm going to show y'all the scripture. It's something that y'all must apply. Watch this. Second Thessalonians, chapter 1, verse 7. Bring it out. Unto you who are in trouble. Whoa. It says, unto you. Unto you. Sis, let me ask you a question. Have you lost anybody in these streets of gun violence? Yes, you know. What about the drugs? Right. What about you, brother? Yeah. Read it again. The book of 2 Thessalonians, chapter 1, verse 7. Because who's going to speak up? Who's going to teach and talk about what's going on in, in, uh, in the world? You had a man going to a school, going room to room, killing babies. He shot his grandmother before he started. Watch this. Read. And look, let's not forget about the Buffalo shooting. You had a young, white, male, case a place out, a terrorist, go inside a the predominantly black store, Hispanic and black, and start letting off shots. Some people he double tapped. Who's going to talk about it? What about those people that's hurt behind that? Where the healing going to come from? Watch this, going to come out of the scriptures, read. And to you who are troubled, rest us. Unto you who are troubled. Rest with us. Until you, until you who are troubled, it's time for you to rest with us. The officer brought it out earlier. Today is the Sabbath day, which is the day of rest. On the Lord's Sabbath day, we are commanded not to work, not to buy, sell, cook, clean, things of the nature. Not to make money, right? But to come together and, in the scriptures. You, you understand? Put it on speakerphone. Let them hear it. Read, what you, read it again from the top. And to you who are troubled. Unto you. 
Jenny, what's your name, sister? Denise. Denise, what's your name, bro? Tony. Denise, Tony, and Jenny. To you who are troubled, and all those families who are hurt by that terrorist attack in Buffalo, all those families who are hurt by that terrorist attack in Texas. Watch this, this is for you who are troubled, read. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. Rest with us. If you knew to rest on the Sabbath day, which is Sabbath or Saturday, they wouldn't have been in that store at Buffalo. Bring it out, right? That shooting took place on the Sabbath day. Bring it out. You understand? So what happened? What you think happened? Was it their fault? No. Who fault is it? What's that on your Let me show you watch this. Bring it out. Um, it goes on the side. It's on the side. Who fault is? Give me Jeremiah 23. Watch this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna point the finger. I gotta point the finger. If y'all have been taught the proper way, that Sunday is really not the day of worship. Bring it out. But Saturday, the seventh day is. Bring it out. You wouldn't have no business shopping on the Sabbath day. Bring it but out. Are they at fault? No, it was the teacher that taught them that. That's right. The pastors in these churches. Bring it out. They are teaching y'all wrong. They telling y'all that Christ looked like this. When the Bible said he looked like this. Right. That's right. They telling y'all to come as you are. When the Bible says, no, I have a dress code. You understand? Read what you got. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 23, verse 1. Bring it out. Woe be unto the pastors. God is pointing the fingers at the pastors because they are misleading the sheep. Right. God said, woe unto the pastors. For the, for the record, the word woe means death and destruction. Read it again. Woe be unto the pastors. God said death and destruction are coming to the pastors. Why? That destroyed and scattered the sheep. Of my pastor. Because they destroy and they scattering y'all, the sheep of his pastor. They got y'all thinking that you're supposed to come to church on Sunday. Right. They got you exactly. thinking that his son is a so-called white man. They got you thinking that God loves everybody. He destroyed the pastors in these churches are destroying our people. God's That's people. right. Read what you got. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pastor, uh -huh. save the Lord. You said that? Saith the Lord. Therefore, thus said the Lord God of Israel. Of who? The Lord God of Israel. Lord God of you so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Indians. That's right. That's who catching the heat out here. That's who get put to death. Right. That's who get their neck kneeled on. That's right. That's who get a whole clip in them. Right. That's who getting hung. Right. They still, you know they still hanging us? Yes. It's us that is happening to. Saith the Lord. Read. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel. Against the pastors. Against who? Against the pastors. Against these Catholic, Christian, Baptist pastors. Bring it in. It's them that's misleading the sheep. The people in Buffalo had no idea they were supposed to be shopping that day. Because they was misled. They was never taught right. You understand? Read. That be my people. Ye have scattered my flock and driven them away. Driven them away from the real truth. Right. You have driven them away to let them know that they are the real Israelites. That's right. They are the real Jews. That's right. You got you, you got our people, yeah. the pastors got our people thinking that they're Puerto Rican, that they're Mexican, that they're African American, that they're Haitian. No, God calls you Israel. Alright, read. And have not visited them, behold, I would visit upon you the evil of your doings, said the Lord. God said he's gonna pay them a visit since they don't want to visit the children. Now give me Micah, where it's about the, uh, the priest's lips. Watch this, because who are we standing before you? Who are we? We are the prophets and servants. All right, that's who we are. Watch this. Yeah, no, okay. Watch this. The book of Malachi, chapter two, verse seven. Bring it out. For the priest's lips shall keep knowledge. Who lips? The priest's lips shall keep knowledge. That's right. The priests, the pastors in these churches, they're supposed to give you the real knowledge, That's but right. they are not. They're not. They're misleading you. Read it again. For the priest's lips shall keep knowledge, and they shall seek the law at his mouth. That's so right. The Bible says that the priest's lips are supposed to keep knowledge, and you are supposed to seek the knowledge out of his mouth. So in other words, what they're saying, if you got any questions, like my brother with his hand up, Ask your question. And that, when you ask your question, as a priest, I'm supposed to give you an answer, right. a solution. Same with you, Jenny. 
If you got a question, how can I be comforted? How can I um, change the way I live? Ask the question, and we'll give you the solution. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.